Well, I thought this time I'd make a little lesson for you that you can try yourself. This old French gypsy caravan here, which I'm painting for a friend's daughter just as a present. Um, but I thought it would be quite a nice one you might like to try yourselves. So I'll take it through step by step with you. And we'll start with the colours here that we're going to use. And it's in my ordinary stay wet palette, the same one that I normally use as a sandwich box with two layers of paper towels and a layer of greaseproof paper which keeps the paints wet when the lid's on and still keeps them slightly damp as well when I'm using them. And then a separate palette to mix in. I should be using my filbert brushes and some round brushes. This is a small canvas as you can see. Um, I have squared this one up. The picture itself, which I've just been looking at, is slightly longer than the uh, height of the actual um, canvas. So I've divided it off here again by taking the photograph and saying, right, how uh, by going diagonal to diagonal, we'll finish here, and that's putting it at this level. So there's my line for the top of the picture, and by going from that, so I've given it more sky, and I've taken the diagonal across here to here, and that's where the bottom of the picture comes. And I just extend the sky and the base a bit more to fit this picture into this scene. So that's the way I can do that without distorting the, the picture at all and keep, keeping it all in. I've taken one or two things out on it, but um, I want to keep this fairly simple. We're into our different greens here. We're into very turquoisey, bluey greens, and we're into the uh, warmer yellow greens here, more orangey greens. So we're going to work our way through those with these few colours we've got. To start then, we'll have a go at the sky first of all. I'm going to use a half inch filbert at first here. We've drawn it all out. We know about doing the quarters and eighths. So I've done one, two, one in the centre, then two here to make it into quarters and the same at the side. And I've drawn out my design within those squares. A bit of water on my brush to start off with. And we'll look at the sky here. I want the landscape to stand out against the sky. So what sort of day do I want? Oh, it's a nice French sunny day. So I'll start with a little bit of turquoise here and a wee bit of white. Let's just look at starting up here at the sky. Yes, we'll just dabble that on with the tip of the brush, crisscrossing the brush, so we get a slightly uneven effect here. The lovely turquoise colour I've got. And I want to cover up these pencil marks really well, right down to the edge of the buildings here and underneath the roof of the wagon, just coming into these branches. I'm going to let the turquoise reflect over the top of these leaves of the hedge here. So I'm going to come right up here with that. A bit more turquoise, white, right down here on this wall here, up into there, even across some of the clouds here, just letting a little bit of white stay behind. Coming down through here, lots of the turquoise and the white. And you see I've, I've varied it slightly, it isn't just one layer of turquoise. I've got a little bit more white here, a little less there. Go right up into the sky up here. Now I'm having to add the sky on with this shaped canvas. Maybe you've been lucky enough to get a canvas that's uh, the same the shape as the photograph, which would be easier for you. Right down to here. And I'm going to also fill up this area in between. Don't want to spend too long on this, so it's just a gift for somebody's daughter that uh, has this caravan in her garden, which is rather attractive. So just pushing it into the canvas all the way across here. Right. And, uh, I think I'd like a little bit more than that yet. We'll just go a bit more back into these trees here and around. I'm going to need this turquoise later for the um, wagon itself. So it's a useful colour to have in this. It's going to use it quite a lot. Right, then I want to make a cream, a warm cream. So I'm going to take some, clean my brush, take some white and a little touch of yellow ochre. We touch of yellow ochre, very useful to colour to have. Keep it quite light and we'll just bring that into these lighter areas that I left here. Right through, just blending it softly in with the brush. So 
where the white areas are, it's nice and clean. See how quickly the acrylic dries, the acrylic we're painting with. The same technique with oils, there's nothing to say you can't use exactly this technique with oils in the same way. Next, I'm going to blend it in at the edges so it's clean there. You see how I blend it in at those edges. Right through here, blending it through from the light areas into the blue slightly like this. And right through here, around the caravan, blending it up, just gently feathering it in extra strokes in different directions. more white, a bit more yellow ochre, just a touch. Use your white first and then put the yellow ochre in afterwards. Remember, always do your light colours first, right down here into the bushes, right up through there, and just to give it a little more vibrance in a minute, I'm going to put a little bit of yellow and white together on top of this white. So let's take now a white, and we'll take a little bit of cadmium yellow, but it's almost pure white. So it's a completely different yellow, and we'll just put a little bit of that lighter yellow with the white just on top of the clouds around here, just feathering it in, just a, just a lighter touch of the tip of the brush, just feathering it in here. And then also a bit of that <coughs> on some slates or something at the back here, so we'll just put that in there as well. A bit like painted by numbers, isn't it? There we go. Right, let's move on now, continuing the background, bring the background forward. Let's look at this bit of roof that's going on here. I've almost painted it out. Now for that I'm going to take a little bit of burnt sienna. And I'm going to put it back in with that mix that I had just now of um, yellow ochre and, and the white. And you see we get a quite a nice sort of soft brown there. I'm going to want to mix something with that in a minute, but while I've got it on my brush, this is just the burnt sienna, a little bit of yellow ochre and the and the white. Burnt sienna, a little bit of yellow ochre and the white. And just, just put that into this shape here. There we go, like that. We won't bother putting in the spokes of it yet because uh, we need to put those lights up a dark later. And we can see it happening here in the background a bit as well. Is it anywhere else? Yes, we come over here and it's slightly warmer over here as well. We've got some light coming through into where we've got that yellow just now, just on that edge. And there's a little bit of that warmth just tucked in on here. There we go. Now I'm going to take a little bit of magenta into that same colour because it, the, when we put it on the roof just now it was just a little bit too brown. There we are. Now that little bit of magenta just cools it a bit, brings it up into here, we'll bring that through. I'm just going to let that come over that blue. I've already painted that blue in, you see, across there. So this comes, letting the blue just show through and bring that right up into the wall here, just showing through. You see where I've got the blue there? Now, if I take that same colour, the magenta, a bit more water in my pot again, we take that magenta, that very light pink magenta, and I add a little bit of cobalt blue to it. You get a lovely soft mauve. Look at that lovely colour there. So cobalt blue, a little bit of the magenta, and a wee bit of the existing colour on our brush, the yellow ochre and white, and we get this lovely soft mauve look. Just right, it just, just appears before us. Just, they just turn into things. So we've got this, the little steps coming down here. Comes right down into there, right through here with that shut with that colour. I'm going to put more darks in there later. There we go. Make some more of that colour. It's very useful. So the very light magenta, a little touch of. Cobalt to give a, a sort of violet colour right down into the greens here and then the line of the I'm using it very thinly you'll notice now it's almost like a glaze you can see my drawing through it I'm just going to scumble it onto there quite thinly just just working up these shadows it comes all the way through the background here I'm just going to leave you can see my drawing through there <coughs> that's the beauty of using it thinly like a glaze you can see it as a glaze through here now but this blue is lovely I'll put even more blue in now I'm going to add a little bit of the yellow ochre again, just to 
warm it up and green it down a little bit. And look at that colour, it's just a subtle tint, but look at that colour changes everything again. I'm taking that same colour, weird isn't it, I'm going to use it all over the place, up into the stonework here, little brush strokes just coming across everything we've done to make the effect of stone. Look at that pretty picture we've got already, and it is quite pretty, pretty pretty, but same colour, the cobalt, a little bit of the magenta again, a little bit of yellow ochre, but a bit more yellow ochre this time. I'm making it greener. And look how we get this lovely green tint, grey green coming down here. That's strong. See, I've just left that branch there so I can see where it is. Quite dark, a bit of strong green just here, so I'm making it a little bit darker and stronger there. Bring it down into here as well. Back to my original colour, the magenta, a little touch of white, very tiny, it's just been a bit lighter. Magenta, the um, cobalt, a bit more magenta because I want it pinker again, a little bit lighter. Here we are down here. This is quite blue at the moment now, look. I can have some of that shadow coming right down to the bottom of my picture, so I need a bit more water just to glaze it. I'm using the, the same mix, the magenta and blue, just to do a glaze now through here. Just in paint. Bring it up and little strokes out there for the the leaves, make the strokes about the leaves here. Look, I'm just using little tickle, tickle strokes. Yeah, look how we've got on so quickly so far. Let's come down to this wagon here now, and we're going to go back to our turquoise again. So the turquoise, we were using the, co the, the cobalt, now we're using the turquoise, which is a much lighter blue. Just test that on there. And almost pure so with a little bit of that other colour on the brush, it comes in right through here. Is it anywhere else? Yes, coming down here. Now, again the same, taking the turquoise direct as it is, using quite thinly at the moment. And I'm going to paint this in over that purple that I did earlier. This is what I was going to say, we're going to use the glaze, one colour over another. And look how we get the effect of shadow over there, right over that purple thinly. And immediately I've got the effects of shadow there. And look how quick and simple that was. Don't even need to paint those shapes in anymore, it's virtually it's there, look. And if I use that with a little more white, I'm going to take a touch of white, the same turquoise, and a touch of white now, come up to here, and I'm going to put a wee, wee touch of yellow into it, a bit more white. I've got the turquoise and made it more yellow with a bit, a bit more, with a little touch of, of cadmium yellow. And look at this lovely light green we can get. Turquoise light green by adding a little bit of that yellow to it to get this effect of sunlight. So we've got the base coat of the, of the turquoise green. Now I'm just bringing a little bit of this turquoise and white down here, dappling across the sunlight. And look at that lovely effect we can get. Use your finger if you need to. Right, there we go. Now we need to come down to these deeper greens. This is a, an unusual green here, isn't it? It's a sort of Ooh, well, it's a sort of blue. Well, I like my Prussian blue because it stops me having to use black all the time. I'm going to take some Prussian blue. And I'm going to make a sort of deep green out of that. So Prussian blue, and again, take my yellow ochre to make the green. Prussian blue. Which will give me... This sort of green, and it's too, it's too green, it's too, there's too much at the moment, there's too much um, yellow ochre in it. Yeah, that's bluer. And I'm going to put a little bit of the cobalt into that as well, just to blue it down a bit more. And there we are, we've got, almost got our, our, our greeny blue there. So you just add a bit more cobalt if you want it to be a little bit bluer. That's giving me that lovely deep green there. So again, we've added one more colour. We've added the Prussian blue now. And so I'm going to need a smaller brush, I know that. And bring that colour up here. And we're going to come right up to the edge there. The beams that are going on, just holding it up here. Just indicate those. Put a bit more yellow into that in a minute, because it needs to be a bit yellower under there. 
darker. As we did before, it starts to come into the other colours. So I'm going to start to blend it across some of these down here. Right down through here, we want that to be darker. I'm going to put darker colour in there in a minute. We're going to use our Prussian blue to make the dark shortly. Now, it's time for the, um, the basic greens of the grass in the background, but let's put this yellow in up here. So I'm going to take some chrome yellow, don't make it too strong, chrome yellow and just take it down a little bit with that preak pre the colour I had just now. I'm going to just green it down a bit. So it's too bright like that look. I'm going to paint in the yellow first just to show you what I mean. That is far too bright. That's almost pure chrome. Let's put a little bit of that green colour we had just now with it and just bring it down a bit. Look how we can too much, just take some of that green, just bring it down a tone, soften it down and blend it in with that colour. Going to need to go down a brush soon. Right, let's make this lovely green here. We've got our cobalt, we've got our chrome yellow. We can make cobalt and chrome yellow will give me this lovely yellow green. And the more blue I put in, the more blue it'll be, and the more yellow I put in, the more yellow it'll be. That makes sense, doesn't it? And we'll whip it in. Now you see how blue that is? That's quite um, dark. If I put it on here, you see how dark it is? Take some more of that um, yellow and put a bit of white with it this time. So chrome yellow and a little touch of the cobalt and we get a lovely light yellow green there. I talked just now about using a, a lighter green by using the turquoise, which I'm going to do in just a moment. I talked about turquoise greens earlier. Let's take that turquoise now and just put some of it across this colour and look how we get reflected light straight away. This is the, the turquoise again, how we can use one colour over another and backwards and forwards here to get the effects of light. And we use those little strokes of turquoise here and the coolness of the shadows here as well. And I could put the cobalt with this to make my blues here as well. But I just want to bring a bit more of this, this cool turquoise down into this grass here. And look at that effect we get. Is that pretty or is that pretty? Now we were talking earlier about making the, the turquoise green, so let's take some of the chrome yellow with the turquoise now and add a little bit of white to that. And you've got this wonderful blue green we can get with that, which is much, much lighter. Let's look at that now, isn't that lovely? So we can get this much lighter green to start shining through. So it's a nice one for you to have a go at, isn't it? So just by painting an effect of light, now I've got to go down brushes. I've got to start looking at a finer brush. I do need to do some detail. So I'll take a little break while I change brushes. Right, let's continue. And I've picked up now a rigger brush and a little, a little quarter inch filbert. And I'm going to start with the filbert and I need to start working in these twigs and branches in the background. Now earlier on we used our Prussian blue and we had burnt sienna in the palette. We'll take a bit of burnt sienna and a little touch of cobalt just so it's not too dark and using the edge of the filbert we should be able to start picking up on these the effects of these branches. So I don't want them too dark. So this is the cobalt blue, a little bit of white, a little bit of Prussian to make it a bit darker, and a touch of burnt sienna just to give us a mid-grey. We can start to paint in. I can use the rigger for this as well, but I'm just starting to use a slightly larger brush straight away. Actually, these twigs as they lift up through here. And while we've got the same colour on the brush, we start to look at the details on here. Now we've got a line coming down here. I'll try and paint that down. I've got these little strokes to paint it down. Down there. And it comes down this side as well. This is the same green, the same grey. 
down here as well. Do a lot of painting one straight quick line, so I don't think I will. I can rest my hand to do that. I want to get a, a slightly heavier, should be a bit more brown in that, a little bit more burnt sienna into there to make it a little bit warmer down here, a little bit darker. I can always put some um, Prussian blue in to make it a bit darker as well, for instance here. Right, a little bit now of the Prussian blue. The Prussian blue and then the burnt sienna. So we've got a deeper colour altogether. See if we can start to find some of these darker colours. Coming down there, look, the Prussian blue and the burnt sienna to give me that darker tone. And that makes all the lights come out. And if we've got dark there, we can start to pick up on the darks down here as well. Again, I need more blue in that, so I'm going to make it a bit bluer and not quite so brown. And we can start on this wheel, start doing the detail on this a bit more now. At the minute. Prussian blue, burnt sienna. Whether I make it warmer or cooler by adding more blue or more brown. If we want to make some of these branches up here a little bit stronger, some of them we can just bring that dark down into those branches a little bit more from the top there. And we want some red going on. Now until now I've just been using the magenta, so I'm going to continue. I'm going to get back to my magenta for a minute and just pick up some of this magenta with a wee touch of cadmium into it, just to keep it cool here in the shadow. And I'll just bring that down. A bit of blue in a minute as well. We've got a nice bucket here too, which wants painting in, in the red. A bit more of that magenta happening down there. Just, just subtly, but it's too much, too much, too bright. Just a little bit of the magenta here and there, just to... All right, that's a lot of our darks. We've got a lovely piece of wire sculpture happening here which I think she'd quite like in, so we'll have a look at that in a moment. This area isn't working for me, I need to come back on that with a, a bit more tone, so before I carry on with my fine work I'm just going to come back into here and use a bit of the cobalt just to glaze this whole thing down a bit here and make it a bit darker coming down across the Right, so that was using the larger brush that we were using before. Back to my rigger now. I want to pick up on this lovely wire sculpture shape and see if I can paint that in. It's quite fun here. It's not a part of the wagon, but it is a detail that is rather attractive. Let's see if I can just get that paint wet enough to... Pick up and paint with this, comes around here and curls all the way down there, comes right round here and down into there. While I've got the fine brush in my hand we'll pick up on the little details that require a fine brush. And I want to make this much lighter turquoise and white for the archway here which is rather lovely. Once I've got the light mix on my brush now it should be alright. Come around here. A bit wider than that actually. But... This is the rigger brush then and we're using turquoise and white and a little bit of yellow into that just to Talking about turquoise, we'll just bring that turquoise back around the 
design here. So I've done this one as a gift, but also as a gift to you as well, so just have a little go at it, eh? Now, I'm going to make a little bit of pink. So I'm going to take my white again and a little bit of the magenta for a very, very light pink because the swan needs to be picked out with a very, very light pink now. Find the edge of the wings and suddenly the sunlight comes out when we start to put these warms in because we've been using really cools all the way through this until now. Could even use a little touch of yellow into that to make it a bit more golden in a minute. We might just do that. Tiniest touch of yellow just to give it a slight golden flavour. Let's use that here look and see what happens. A little bit more yellow than that. That's about right now. There's a different blue going on in there too that I need to play with. We're well on the way now. I mean you might not want to do much more than this. You know, it, it's almost finished as it is. Right, I was talking about different blues and we need to go back to our cobalt blue a little bit. So we'll take some turquoise first to show you the difference and we'll just put that in here. There's my turquoise again. Now let's take the cobalt and use it a lot more purely because it's a totally different blue and it's a much brighter. See how that makes everything else look so green around it? Much, much nicer. So those couple of colours, just like one stroke of that colour can totally change things and I want to start bringing that up into here a bit more now as well. Just to get this blue, so we're playing against the greens a bit more. What a difference it makes. I've been holding these back, you see, deliberately. I've been waiting to, to use these as pure blue here. Right, we just need to finish this off and uh, to do that, to carry on with the small brush and make a very, very light green to start really trying to play the um, sunlight in the trees. It's interesting, I just had an email from Burton Agnes Hall where I painted as a resident artist many years ago. We're talking 20 years ago plus now. And uh, after all these years, they just said, Oh, I th you think we've got some of your artworks here. Um, you left for sale. And I don't remember anything about that now, 20 years ago. And as I say, I want to come back with a bit of pink and put a pink light right through the sky. Right, the pinks. The lights here, background. A little bit of yellow into that as well then, just, just to take it down a fraction. There we go. We'll just bring some of these highlights of light back and then around into the trees here and And maybe I'll make it a little bit darker into the grass in the foreground. I'm just going to take some, finally, some Prussian blue and a bit of my Bount Sienna again. And just look at a few darks, warm darks down here. And there we are. I think for what she wanted, I should about do it. Maybe a little bit more of the pink into the... Grasses down here just to link it a bit more again, even around here. So that's it, a little step by step for you to try out Gypsy Caravan in France. Mm -hmm.